Welcome to the Congregational Church of Wells as we gather for another online worship service on this fourth Sunday in the season of Easter. I want to again express my thanks to the worship team for making these online worship services possible. There will be a Zoom meeting of the Diaconate this coming Tuesday, May 5th at 7 p.m. and there will be a Zoom meeting of the Executive Council this coming Wednesday, May 6th at 7.30 p.m. Let us join together in worship as we share in the call to worship. Let us remember these familiar words recognizing in the risen Christ our Good Shepherd. Jesus, you are our shepherd we shall never want. You make us lie down in green pastures. You lead us beside the still waters. You restore our souls. You guide us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Even though we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil, for you, Christ, comfort us. Jesus has prepared a table for us in the presence of our foes. Jesus has anointed us with the oil of salvation. Our cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of our Holy Savior forever and ever. Amen. The Lord my shepherd guides me well, and all my wants are fed. Amid green pastures made to lie, beside still waters led. My careworn soul grows strong and whole, when God's true path I tread. Your steadfast love will follow me to shield me all my days and bring me to your holy house redeemed from arrow's ways my whole life long to join the song of those who sing God's praise Let us join together now for our prayer of invocation. Incarnate God, you are the one who comes to us in Jesus Christ. Holy One, you are the one who comes to us in the Holy Spirit. Sovereign of earth and heaven, you are the one who calls us to recognize you today and every day as splendid mystery. Gather our hearts and minds this day kindle our God consciousness. Let us worship you in awe and wonder. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. And now we lift up the joys and concerns that have been brought to me by the chair of our care team, Judy Ryan. She asks for continued prayers for Joe Bortz and his family on the passing of Joe's father, the family of Ronald Avery, the family of Bob Bartlett, the family of Jen Dow and the family of Ginny Mercury. A recent joy was the birth of a great grandson to Ruth James. Ruth's granddaughter, Sarah, and her husband, Joe, welcome Caleb James in California. Prayers also for Sylvia, who is in the declining health in Avita. Other prayers that we lift up before you, God, are Bill, Lisa, David Jr., Ruth, Paul, John, Pam, Jean and Bruce, Jennifer, Joanne, Amy, Carrie, Nadine, Roberta. We also lift up prayers for Sandra, Rachel, Courtney, Jean and Neil, Jan, Ernie, Lee, Rita, Jack, Donna, Christine, Claire, Marie, Ray, and Tina, and prayers as well for Jeanette, Nancy, Kathy, Cindy, Vince, and Antonio. As we lift up these prayers before you, uh, Lord, let us also join for our pastoral prayer. 
God, we give thanks to you for, for providing us with a good shepherd, one who watches over us, protects us, and cares deeply for each and every one of us. May we be attentive to the shepherd's voice so that we might follow in his ways and find comfort in his presence. We lift up all those that we name in our prayers and ask for your loving presence in their lives to offer healing and strength, comfort, and encouragement. Our prayers extend beyond the boundaries of our church, community, and state, and nation to include all people throughout the world. May our common struggles help, to find, help us to find common ground and to find ways of overcoming barriers between us, barriers of language, race, culture, and background. As we offer these prayers before you, Lord, let us also join for a moment of silence remembering those concerns that lie deep within each one of our hearts. As we offer these prayers before you, Lord, we also pray in the words that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. John chapter 10 verses 1 through 10 The Good Shepherd and His Sheep Very truly I tell you Pharisees anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him, because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Thus ends the reading. May the Lord bless our understanding of these words. Many years ago, children in schools in America learned to know the voice of Walter Damrosch. He taught thousands of boys and girls to know and to love music. Classes stopped at a certain hour, the school radio was switched on, and then his familiar voice was heard saying, Good morning, my dear children. They then enjoyed a half an hour of beautiful music and he would tell them the meaning and the message within the music. One day, Mr. Damrosch was asked by the headmaster of a school to come and talk to the boys and girls. He sat, on, he sat on a platform, and the children fidgeted because they were afraid he was going to make a long speech. The headmaster let him introduce himself. Mr. Damrosch stood up and smiled, but no one knew who he was. Then he said, Good morning, my dear children. And immediately, the whole room 
was in an uproar. The children clapped and cheered. Mr. Damrosh said, and why did you cheer? You do not know me. Yes, we do, the children replied. We know your voice. I believe that this story helps us to better understand Jesus' words from John's Gospel when he says to the religious leaders of the temple, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will not perish. It's hard for us to understand what Jesus means when he talks about his sheep, because many of us has, have so little experience with sheep and with shepherding. Maybe this will help. Sheep tend to grow fond of their shepherds. A shepherd can walk right through a sleeping flock without disturbing a single one of them, while a stranger could not step foot in the fold without causing pandemonium. Sheep seem to consider their shepherds part of the family, and the relationship between the two is quite exclusive. They develop a language of their own that outsiders are not privy to. A good shepherd learns to distinguish a bleed of pain from one of pleasure, while the sheep learn that a cluck of the tongue means food, or a two-note song means that it is time to go home. In Palestine today, it is still possible to witness a scene that Jesus almost certainly witnessed 2,000 years ago, that of Bedouin shepherds bringing their flock home from the various pastures they have grazed during the day. Often these flocks will end up at the same watering hole around dusk, so that they get all mixed up together, eight or nine small flocks turning into a convention of thirsty sheep. The shepherds do not worry about the mix-up, however. When it is time to go home, each one issues his own or her own distinctive call, a special trill or whistle or a particular tune or a particular pipe, and that shepherd's sheep withdraw from the crowd to follow their shepherd home. They know who they belong to. They know their shepherd's voice, and it is the only one that they will follow. On this Sunday, when we open with the words of the 23rd Psalm, we are led to wonder what we can learn from the relationship between shepherds and their sheep as we focus on this day, which is traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. First, is, there's a level of intimacy between the Good Shepherd and his followers. Those children would not have recognized that voice unless they had heard countless shows which help them to recognize him by merely hearing the inflections of his voice when he uttered the familiar words, Good morning, my dear children. Likewise, we heard that sheep tend to regard their shepherds as part of the family. The lesson, I believe, is that the more intimately we know Jesus, the better able we will be able to hear his voice and to tap his power. We live in a time when we feel powerless when events are forcing us to disrupt our schedules, our relationships, our work, our school, and our play. But when we hear the voice of Jesus through his spirit, we feel empowered to recognize the blessings that God is offering us in the midst of these difficult times. We also learn from the image how important it is to follow the Good Shepherd if we are to hear his voice. To paraphrase the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church in the United States, following the Good Shepherd is not complex, but it is difficult to do. Jesus summed up his leadership as the Good Shepherd with these simple commands. Love our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our spirit, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Not complex but difficult to do. Finally, the Good Shepherd is the one who shows the way, the one who has the vision to lead the flock to safety. When sheep stray from the flock, they don't do well. They can't, tend, they can't fend for themselves. In fact, when they fall, they're not even able to get back up without the help of the shepherd. So it is with Christians and with churches. When we stray, when we lose sight of the Good Shepherd, we lose our way, 
and we are no longer able to fulfill our sense of purpose, which the shepherd has in mind for us. All of which is to say that as we seek to live as disciples, we must put the shepherd first, and everything else will follow. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The good shepherd cares for us, watches over us, protects us, and guides us, especially through difficult and dangerous times. May we listen for the voice of the Good Shepherd, and may that voice lead and guide us our whole life long. The Church recognizes that this is a time that is putting significant strain on our finances, but we ask, if you are able, that you continue to support the ministries of the Church so that it can continue to share Christ's love with all by mailing in your pledges and donations. The church address is on the pledge envelopes or can be found by looking up the Congregational Church of Wells either on our website or by Facebook. And now let us join for our benediction, taken from 1 Peter and John 10. You are called for a purpose, for the sake of knowing and drawing close toward God our person bears up under sorrows. You are precious in the sight of God, and as living stones, your lives are being built up into a spiritual sanctuary where the justice and mercy and peace of the risen Christ may dwell. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give eternal life to them, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Jesus, we are the sheep of your pasture. You have chosen us. We have chosen you. Amen.